Hello, my name is Eugene Cooper III, AKA Trey. And this is my documentary three. In this film, I'm going to be taking you through my life from childhood up until this point now. Through this journey, we'll be going through obstacles, discoveries, opportunities, and just a peek or a glimpse into what it's like being me. I really hope you enjoyed this, this film and what I have created. And I appreciate everybody that worked with me, that believed in me, that inspired me to do this. Um, and I'm looking forward to a fulfilling film journey and also an opportunity to educate and inspire and lead the way for those just like me. This is three. You are God's son. You are God's man. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't let any negative word into your spirit. And any words that have been said, release it today. I love you, brother. You got this. I'm here for you. God bless you. I was born in Riviera Beach, Florida. It's a southern city, about 45 minutes from Miami. Um, the city is a waterfront city. Um, I was raised in the east side of Riviera Beach. I remember living in the house on, I think it's 34th Street, and I was born to Irene Moore Cooper and Eugene Cooper Jr. I'm the oldest of three. Uh, growing up in Riviera, it was, it was good. Um, even though the city might have had some issues as far as like crime rates or you know um, unequal opportunity, but that's a, that's across the nation, especially with uh, black populations. Um, but Growing up in Riviera was, was definitely a good opportunity because it was small. I also lived in West Palm Beach, Florida for, I would say, a good portion of my life as well. West Palm Beach and Riviera Beach is like sister cities. The only thing that separates them is a bridge or a, like a roadway, um, uh, like a five mile roadway or whatever. And um, I remember living in the house on 7th Street. There's plenty of story, there's plenty of things I can say about my childhood, especially from this point. Um, I remember very, very vividly, and my siblings and I, we were, we would go to the backyard and we'll play in the backyard. And um, one day we wanted to climb the house and we climbed on top of the house and walk across the house or whatever. And my grandmother, who was inside the house, said she heard noises and whatnot. Come, come later on, we got in trouble for it. One of our neighbors told on us, but the whole entire time was fun. That was a very exhilarating moment for us. This is Irene Moore Cooper. I am the very proud mother of the intelligent, brilliant, handsome Eugene Cooper III. Um, when I think about Eugene, Trey as I call him, Trey Bay, he is the individual, the blessing that made me a mama. I remember when he was like 18, no, he was younger than that, he was like eight months when he started to say, mama, mama, he said mama, did he say mama first? I can't remember, of course I'm going to say mama because he's my boy. But he was in the car with he and his um, father, and he said, Mama. And I said, Yes, Trey. And he said, Daddy. And his daddy said, Yes, Trey. And it went on. Every time we got in the car, we started driving for months. He's very observant. And Trey has been that way all of his life. Even when he sees things and he's been respectful, he would notice them. 
He's always been my star. He's been small, but he thinks big. And everywhere he goes, he excels and he works hard to reach his goals and achievements um, to please his mother. I'm so glad that, I'm so proud of the man he's growing into. He's finding himself and finding his way. And we've had Rocky Rose, but he's always been right by his mama's side. And although I didn't, you know, lean and depend on him, I needed his support and I appreciated his support. And not only that, he supported his grandmother. I remember she would pick him up and I had all three of them were here and <clears throat> he would go home with my mama when she'd come from her job and stay at our house and do laundry or sweep the floor. And he'd sit in the front seat like he a big, he's a big man and have his right hand out the window and, and just wave at people. He's just a little prophet of God and he loves God and his faith is amazing. His siblings have great faith as well, but I know that it's because they watch him. And although more is caught than taught, I give glory and honor to God for who he is. I went to elementary school at Washington Elementary um, from grades kindergarten up until fifth grade. That's where the that's where I learned a good a good amount of structure. Um, my mom was a teacher there as well, so you know how that is. She taught me well. She she helped me get to where I am. I remember being in like fifth grade and they asking us, "Where do you see yourself in ten years?" or and whatnot. And I remember being voted as most likely to be president. Uh, Frankly, I don't want to be president right now, of course, but you know that was good, good, um, good information, good, good stuff to hear, so that I can use that going forward. I attended middle school, Watkins Middle School, from 2014 to 2017. That's where uh, I gravitated towards the medical field. Really, uh, the programs they had were, I think, robotics and uh, medical science and I chose medical science because I felt like my call to life was to help people and my passion was to also help people make them smile. Um, I feel as though I do that in a number of ways and being able to go to Watkins and have the opportunity to learn what I learned there and be able to still use what I learned there in college is truly, truly a blessing. Good morning. I am Dr. Nathan Ringel, Eugene Cooper's middle school teacher. Words that come to mind in describing Eugene would be fortitude, endurance, even temperedness, serenity, and self restraint. Fortunately, when I taught Medical Science Academy in middle school. The principal that hired me allowed me to create my curriculum. So I didn't have to use the school district's stipulations, directives, and lesson plans in order to present the material for the students. I recall very vividly how Eugene would learn a medical skill and he would always show others how to properly do that skill. He would reteach others the correct procedures, which would include things like hand washing, phlebotomy, and dissection, always explaining to the other students the correct way to accomplish and complete the skill that was assigned. He demonstrated the highest level of decorum and professionalism. He truly is a remarkable young man. He has always been that, and I truly feel that he will accomplish any goal or any type of endeavor that he wishes to in his future. 
so I want to thank him personally for making me so proud and so knowing that he will be a great success in the medical skills that he encompasses on his journey. But you got to be doing what you love to do. I remember my professor saying, if you love what you do and you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And I think that's true. That way. I moved to Tallahassee uh, fall of 2022. It was the end of TCC live classes. Now, coming from home, I always love to be home. I always love to be very close with my family, but God, he put it where I needed to leave. I needed to leave home. And when I came up here, not gonna lie, I was kind of nervous, ner nerve wracking. Um, luckily, I, luckily, at the time of me moving here, my cousin lived here. Um, she graduated from Florida State University in psychology, I think. Um, and having her here was kind of like, I would say a plus. Um, she wasn't always close. She wasn't like on my tail and I wasn't on her tail, but best believe if I needed anything, if I had any questions, she was there. Um, the influx of people, the influx of love I got when I got to Tallahassee was amazing. And to be where I am now is truly, truly, truly a blessing. Uh, my first year here, uh, the people, um, the experiences, is, is definitely full of business here, man. You, you definitely have a lot of young people doing what they wanna do, really, really cultivating their skills and putting forth the effort, man. Like me, 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 me personally, I took my business more serious too. Um, I started to scale it, I started to get more clients. I started to put myself out there more so I could, you know, make a difference and um, like be better than I was previously. Um, yeah. One story I gotta tell y'all about my business when I um, got a job or a partnership with a with a complex named Seminole Grand. Um, they're, a, they're an apartment complex here in Tallahassee and what I did was I, I took my camera, the camera that I'm filming on now, and my gimbal and I went up to the place and I just did a freelancing video just to showcase my skills and um, within the next 48 hours or so, I was hired for a role as a social media manager. Um, that was that was definitely a, a pivotal experience, not only for me, but it was very comforting and it, it made me feel more confident in myself. Like, wow, okay, I actually have skills and I actually took, took something that I love to do and I was able to profit off of it. So that just opened the doors to, to this film here. Being in Tallahassee, I also feel as though it is very um, fast-paced, right? Um, you definitely can get your feet wet up here to the real world, to be to to adulthood. I tell young people, and I tell well, I'm young myself, but I tell kids my age and young people like me, like, look, man, if you're here in Tallahassee, take advantage of the schoolwork. Take take advantage of the, the job you have, the job, because basically the, the cost of living here is not as bad as it, it is across the world. But these are learning steps so you can learn to be more successful, more, more fluent, more, you know, um, more equipped with knowledge so you can take what you learn here and apply it to every aspect of your life. Like me, like me personally right now, right? I am, um, I'm in school right now. I'm a full-time nursing student, as well as a businessman as well. Um, but I also love to enjoy to like, I learn to take time to myself as well. So you learn things about how to grow as a person and as a individual, truly. Um, one thing I feel that 
I really grasped was the fact that like putting me first. Like, like it's good to be selfless, but it's also good to like prioritize your peace. Yeah, prioritize your peace. When I think of Trey, I think of a very respectable young man who is on a mission. And I think that he has a lot to offer the world. I know that God has blessed him and anointed him and gifted him for such a time as this. And I see Trey becoming a great leader, a great man. I love watching how passionate he is about his craft, about photography, about the nursing industry, how passionate he is about his family, how he takes care and loves on his family. I love seeing that about Trey. I know that he is going to become a man after God's own heart. And I also love to see that about him. He was raised by a very lovely woman who instilled some fantastic values into him. And just knowing that he is away and he set a goal and he is accomplishing that goal every day brings me so much joy as just a mother. I'm not his mother, but as a mother, seeing a young man set a goal and to go after that goal is very refreshing and I'm in support of Trey and what he is doing in his life. I wish him nothing but God's blessings and joy and peace and love for him. First Corinthians 15 57 But thanks be to God who has given us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We got the victory, but you knew that. Don't feel the enemy, we all grew that. Living God's word, we pursue that. Living a cruel life, I wouldn't do that. I got a vision, it's 2020. Say you won't love, but he got plenty. I sing this song, listen to me. Every day I sin, but forgive me. Wake up in the morning, got a plan, can't pretend. Seeing through the mess with my cardio lens. Youngin' with a dream, and I'm only 19. Woke up on the scene, stand tall, never lean. Polo on my body, we'll pay for him, Maserati. The way I hog the ball, you would thought my name was Scotty. I don't ever last them to be like poor Gotti. I didn't ever throw NBA. What's up, y'all? Um, basketball has always been a part of my life. Uh, I would say, like, growing up, it's been something that I always loved doing. Grew up watching Dwayne Wade, really, really, really enjoyed his playing style, his technique. Um, and I even had a chance to like see him play one time, or so I thought. But when I'm playing basketball, like being in between these four lines here, it really does help with my stress levels. Like if I'm going through something emotionally, spiritually, whether it be like relationship problems, school problems, family problems, like basketball, has always been something that I can like do and it clear my mind. Um, it's been countless times where like I could do nothing but play basketball all day, every day, just, just because I felt like it and I would never get tired. Like play game after game, you know, balling, just going crazy. And then when I took the time to like work on my health, grow my my mental state, like work on my body, like you can definitely see the change and like see the uh, differences. Treasy Inc. Little story about Ice and Ghost is Ice and Ghosts, their brothers of the same litter. Um, when they were born and ready to be sent home, my mom called me and my brother to where the puppies were. And we got the opportunity to pick them, hand pick them, right? So when I picked Ice and my, and my brother picked Ghost, there was something special about each dog. Ice, which is my dog, had blue eyes. Ghost, which is Chris' dog, had green eyes and what made it so special was that those were our favorite colors my favorite color was blue his favorite color was green and I, 
I definitely do feel that God works in mysterious ways, especially regarding animals, you know, um, being being able to resonate with one and it resonate with you and they they love on you like crazy. That's that's something that's very, very special. Even at times when you don't deserve their love and their affection, they still love on you and they still care about you. And I think that's something that we as humans need to work on, being able to match their energy. Um, whatever's going on, they will know first before we know. Um, you could you could learn a lot from animals. You can be inspired by animals. You know, so, yeah, for sure. I lived in Tallahassee for a period of time. My time there was both happy and humbling. I think that my most memorable moments were those spent with my nieces and nephews during the summers when they would come to visit. From long bike rides on hot afternoons or hiking hot, humid, wooded trails after dusk to even early morning paddling in canoes near the spring, there was always something adventurous to do with them. I'm grateful that I was able to be a vessel in which I could expose my family to a different scenery. One story I remember very, very vividly was when we were in Tallahassee and we were kayaking. And as we were um, kayaking down the, the lake or whatever, I recall this loud thud that came from the trees and we thought it was a snake or, or, or an alligator, but in reality, it was a manatee. Being on this earth, I realized that the best things in life come to those who wait. Patience, determination, and by the grace of God, I can sit here and tell the story, especially my story. And the best part is, it's not even over yet.